What's up, metalheads? This is Wayne. And Michelle. And we are from the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. And you are listening to Burton and Aaron on the Lost in the Dark podcast. Raise your horns. Welcome back, Crip Crew. And thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Lost in the Dark podcast. My name is Burton, and we are welcoming uh, back a very special guest on this episode. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Jason from uh, he's been on before because uh, uh, he's the vocalist of Victims of the System. But we are here tonight to talk about his solo project, which was released Halloween last year, 2021, called uh, Death Wish. Sick title. And uh, we dive into every aspect of this full length release it's an excellent album absolutely excellent cannot recommend it enough links to it in the description below but before we get into it as always we got a couple shout outs really quick um depending on this i'm hoping that this comes out in time but on uh through april 30th we got two big tours going on presented by the legend recording agency first one is the welcome to chaos tour featuring matriarchs our brothers over there in war and uh, headlined by two us below. Again, that goes through almost every day uh, uh, from April 15th to April 30th. And I'm hoping to have this out before April 30th. So if you are in um, Texas, Tennessee, Indiana, Florida, if you're in any of those places um, and seeing this right now, be sure to check that one out. Um, the other one is the... Uh, again, presented by the Legend Recording Agency, The Exorcism Tour, featuring our friends in Living Dead Girl and Fate Destroyed. Also, another one pretty much going through the 30th. Um, so if you're in uh, uh, Florida, South Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, or Ohio, um, be sure to check that tour out. I've already seen it. I saw it on the Michigan date. It's fucking outstanding. Cannot recommend it enough. And last but never least, an upcoming tour, which starts... That right about now, this weekend, um, is of course I'm talking about uh, 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 the uh, Legacy and Blood Tour featuring Reflection of Flesh, yeah, uh, the Breathing Process, Alica Necronomicon, headlined by the Convalescents, and it goes to every corner of the United States, kicking off and ending right here in Michigan. Very fucking excited about that. Um, and that's going to do it for the tour shout out. So the exorcism tour, the welcome to chaos tour and, uh, the, uh, legacy and blood tour. I'll be sure to check all those out. Um, we will, by the time this one comes out, the Michigan dates for two of them would have passed, but not the convalescence. We will be at the Michigan dates for those. So we hope to see you all there. Next up is the podcast shout outs. Join your hosts, Garrett, the Cookie Commander Smith, and Mike, the Master Milker Sergovia, as these two best friends try to figure out this thing we call life using friends, guests, and microphones on the Dipping Milk in Cookies podcast. Reflection of Flesh, of course, uh, is uh, Garrett's band. He is the guitarist. Um, and they, so they're going to be on that, uh, legacy and blood tour and, but dipping milk and cookies is a wonderful podcast. They have a lot of great segments question of the week where they ask questions on Facebook. And if you answer it, you get a shout out as well as, uh, the master milkers, mysterious mysteries, uh, where they dive into the world of paranormal. And one day we will do a cross cast with them. Uh, so Mike and I can, uh, can, uh, go down some rabbit holes. I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm, of course, looking forward to seeing Reflection of Flesh again on the road very soon. And last but never least, you heard him at the top. You heard him at the top of every episode, the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast, coming to you from the glacial and dumping ground known as the Michigan Basin. Wayne and Michelle are a Michigan-based husband and wife, educator, and podcasting duo that examine UFOs and other paranormal topics within Michigan and beyond. Topics include UFOs, the paranormal, conspiracy theories, ghosts, alternative history, the Michigan Dogman, Bigfoot's cryptids, and all things strange and paranormal. Wayne and Michelle are absolutely two of my favorite people that I've met through doing this podcast, and their podcast is just a gift that keeps on giving. I know I say it all the time, but it's true. 
uh, because every single time they have a new guest on, I find a new rabbit hole to go down, new stuff to follow, new videos to watch. It's always very exciting. So if you are into the strange and paranormal, everybody be sure to check out the Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal encounters podcast. And that's going to do it for the shout outs, everyone. So without further ado, Crip Crew, join me in welcoming back our brother, Jason, uh, to talk his brand new album, Death Wish. Out now. Links in the description below. Uh, I hope you all enjoy. <sighs> Welcome back to Lost in the Dark, everyone. We are here with Jason, of course, from Victims of the System. But also, we're here to talk tonight about his solo work uh, uh, on the album Death Wish, which was released October 31st, 2021 of last year. Uh, Halloween night last year. Great night for a release, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely outstanding. So uh, let's just fucking dive in. Like, uh, so where um, the title? Let's just start with the title, Death Wish. Now, I'm going to, of course, the album artwork is uh, in, the, in the thumbnail for this episode. So you all hopefully already saw that. Sadly, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Physical copies do not exist cor- for sale, at least. Correct? Yes. Unfortunately, they don't. I wish okay. they did. I wish they did. They be. They would look really, really sick. Oh, they would. Oh, they would. It's great artwork. Uh, and I will. I will ask you about that later. But uh, uh, the the title itself, I'm curious off the rip. Like, why? Uh, uh, why Death Wish? So when you look up the term Death Wish on Google. The definition you're going to get is, um, what is it? Um, to wish death upon yourself or someone else. And every single song on Death Wish, lyrically, has the recurring theme of wishing death upon, well, in this case, myself or someone else. Oh, shit. Okay. I like that. Like so, a lot, actually, when when all the lyrical content tied around back together, and I, I essentially looked back on the album and every story, I was like, I mean, Death Wish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's phenomenal. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's that's actually really cool. I because I didn't know that that was its um like official definition when you look it up. I didn't know that, so that's pretty interesting to me. When you uh, wish, to wish to wish death upon your to wish death upon not thyself but to wish death upon yourself or someone else. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I uh, I uh, now is this your first like full length solo album? No. No. Okay. I have made. I've made, like, as far as full lengths go, I've made maybe, like, three. And none of them none of them have ever been released. A couple of them have been released on YouTube. Uh, see, okay. I started Jason Gels in, like, 2017. So, back then, I, uh, I had made an album. It was just self-titled. Uh, it was actually, the name was just Jason at that point so right. that, that that was my my very very first link that i basically had like a little guitar processor that had like programmed drum beats on it and i would put the drum beat on and start riffing along and i would record that and that would be just the, the full song so that was like first full length but i like to I like to like called Death Wish the actual first because you know it the most time went into it the the most um effort and uh it took the longest so that yes. that's what I I consider that one first full length but I've made others in, in the past that um were either I've I've actually lost a few of them. I've tried finding them, but damn damn iTunes. 
No, that 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 happens. Trust me, I've I've lost. Um, yeah, I've lost some things before like that. That uh, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I get that. I get that completely. So this is kind of the first one that you've really put out. Um, with this much, you know, like kind of oomph to it or whatever. Uh, this is the one I've put all of my effort into. Like any. Every every ounce of me wanting to be like a musician was set into this album. Excellent, excellent. Yes, yes. Uh, and honestly, it comes through. It really comes through a lot because the 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 range of sounds that you get on Death Wish, and of course, we did like a dark uh, a dark reflections on it. Uh, we've talked about it before, but. I really wanted to dig deeper into it because it's such a great, it's, I love it so much. It's such a great fucking record and it's a full length. It's full, what, 12, 11, yeah, 12, 12. tracks, 12 tracks. Um, I, and, and I, it, it, it spans such a wide variety of sounds. I was curious about like, Cause I when I when I go into it, I hear everything from like a Dimmaborger to fucking uh uh Thy is murder to fit for an autopsy, like so such a wide variety of sounds. I was wondering if you had any like particular influences going in at all, or if it was more just like based on, you know, uh, like you know, because sometimes like people start with like their personal influences, but then sometimes, like you just said, you had uh, uh, multiple stuff that's unreleased. It makes me wonder if it's more just to build off that as opposed to influences. So, a lot of my stuff is very core rooted. Every song has a breakdown. Um, okay. It's it's more or less, I guess. Um, with Death Wish in particular, yes, I was listening to a lot of Thy Art is Murder during the writing of Death Wish. I was, um, Shrine of Malice is a band that I credit every time when it comes to the writing style of my music because their uh, Shrine of Malice's albums uh, show specifically. And you know what? If anyone's watching this who has an issue with Shrine of Malice or an issue with the controversy that happened, don't don't, don't start a fight about it in the comments. Just enjoy the music, man. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know about that controversy. So that's yeah. The, I don't even know. <laughs> see, there's the thing. I get scared to put out that Shrine of Malice is has one of the biggest influences on me because of their. Okay, fair enough. We'll, we'll save that for another day. But I, I always credit their album Show to be uh, a very big influence specifically um, on my music. But I think it kind of transcended with Death Wish um, as well. And then, I mean, of course, there's a lot of, uh, there, there was a, there's a song on Death Wish that I was specifically influenced um, in the way that the intro to one of Lorna Shore's songs was made. So there's a lot of different uh, deathcore influences in there. I would say if there's if there's going to be influences outside of the box from that, of course I always pull from Lamb of God, um, Cannibal Corpse. Uh, I would say, because here's the thing, it's it's funny because a lot of the, the bands you named off, and I, I do like Fit for an Autopsy. I haven't listened to much uh, Dimu, but um, I will say as far as a lot of the Blackened stuff goes, that's more or less Lorna Shore, uh, Shrine of Malice, you know. I hadn't I hadn't really gotten into what people would call true black metal until like like three months after Death Wish I started. Well, no, because I, I was listening to stuff like um I mean, no, they're not, but uh Behemoth, Dark, Funeral, uh Abbott, or stuff like that. But well, and, I mean, well, I, I I'll say this is kind of splitting hairs on some level, but uh, I, I I would I would argue, 
you possibly that a lot of a lot of things like Dimu um aren't true black true Norwegian black metal at least you know what I'm saying um but 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 that fascinates me actually that's really interesting because what what I I guess what I refer what I'm referring to in your in in the sound of death wish referencing black metal is the is the is is it's twofold it's the melodicism and the um the cinematic the cinematic way uh-huh. that it sometimes sounds so if 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 the melo- if, if the melodics and the cinematics aren't coming straight from 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 black metal then for you where are they coming from i'm curious so um <laughs> so what actually turned it all into uh what actually turned me into someone who creates music with symphonics has to do with shrine of malice okay again they, i don't know this controversy i know you seem to oh, be like kind of stepping around it i i've never i don't i've never i don't think i even know shrine of malice like i maybe have heard their name before or seen a logo or something but that's about it uh shrine of malice actually i have right here i've definitely seen that logo okay so yeah there we go they are um so they have some controversy surrounding the vocalists uh there there was a video that surfaced of him and his girlfriend uh seemed like they were both pretty you know popped up on some stuff and and the video just looked bad and it looked like there might have been a setup but you know at this point it's okay. it's all at this point it's all been uh water to fire so okay but um so shrine of malice had been working on an album and uh they had finished the album had it ready and set to release and then this controversy happened, and the album never got released. But I was talking to the main songwriter of Shrine of Malice on a uh, call one time. And, uh, yes, surprisingly, he, he's a very nice uh, person. But he, um, you know, and I can say it now, but uh, he sent me the full new Shrine of Malice album that never got released. And it had a shit fucking ton of orchestration throughout because it was produced by Chris Wiseman of Shadow of Intent. So there was... Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yes. There was copious amounts of brass. There was a shit ton of uh, strings there was choir it was all over the fucking place so with my music i i wanted to i took from that that unreleased shrine of malice album that by the way only like a few hundred people have heard so it nobody would know that this is where i'm taking influence from because it's a very it's it's this small little small little small little that specific thing is what made me say, okay, orchestration is what I'm going to be using to make my music sound brighter, sound more dark. I mean, because orchestration does add a dark sound. Yes. Absolutely. And there's a lot of sections on Death Wish specifically where... I said, this is where orchestration needs to be. There's there's songs on Death Wish where every single section has orchestration except for a breakdown. Right. Yes. I th- Vor- Vortex in Oblivion has. Um, if if you're trying, if you're looking for the most orchestrated death uh, deathcore song ever, listen to Vortex in Oblivion because that song is just oversaturated almost. It, okay, so that that's the orchestration side. But there's also like a lot of like piano work and stuff like yeah. that, and songs with with no orchestration other than like a little bit of like symphonic yeah. piano kind of a thing. 
Like, is that is that still coming from the same influence? So, I mean, it's all it's all wrapping around like. I like to think of each song on Death Wish as taking some type of different sound. Desejo, the first song was is more like, you know, Desejo is the opener. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think Detest, I could, I could say Detest, Design, Destroy takes just a straight deathcore path. Yeah, yeah, Where, yeah. Whereas, like, other songs, they can take this symphonic, uh, symphonic, blackened, death metal sound, whereas other songs um, could be, like, oh, what was it? Conniving Annihilation has pig squeals and 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 uh, slam and and a whole slam section with a whole brand new section later on, like a minute later in the song. That's like this melodic, sad singing part, you know. So I kind of just like to throw throw things at the wind, but make sure everything is sounding, you know, because this is. Anyone who knows me, that this is always what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, no matter what genre it is, it's, it's all trying to be dark. It's what it, it's, it's just trying to be dark. Yeah. So it, there's just a lot of things being thrown at the wind. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that and that and you just led. That's a per, uh, actually a perfect segue because uh, I am. I like. Okay, so since starting to get to know you through your work with victims of the system, of course, uh, yeah, and, and actually, some of my my first introduction to your any of your solo work was the uh, I for the life of me, I can't remember which album it was. There's been so many, but uh, when Aaron like threw like one of your solo tracks on the was, end, what was it? It was in God We Rust when he put a version yes. for a video. And I heard that song. I was like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, that's a Jason track. I'm like, dude, this is amazing. Like, I, I, it blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. And then, and then, I, and then I, I find out about this solo album. And on and, and top of that, like, I've, I've seen, since, since finding out about this, I've seen some of your other work where you really had, you, um, I want to ask you about some song titles because okay. you make some song titles that like, okay, so let's just start with track one on Death Wish. I, how, de, de Morte, but I don't even know the first word. Desejo? Uh, Desejo da de, Morte. Desejo da, what does that mean? Where does that come from? That means Death Wish in Portuguese. Holy shit. Holy shit. All right. I love that. That's amazing. All right. But then, but then track, uh, one, two, three, four, five, we get to, uh, monoman, mo monomania of the psyche. You said monomania was track five. Is it? Am I wrong? Oh, no, four, three, four, three. Am I wrong? Three. three. Okay. Yeah. Monomania of the psyche. Um, what, what is that? And, and, and the of is like the O with the crossed out circle and the V. Yeah. Like, what? where does that come from? Monomania of the psyche means essentially, uh, so monomania means possession. The of is essentially just a cool way of using the black metal OV and then having a cross through it. And yeah. then the psyche, the psyche is your mind. Of or not, well, not your mind, but the psyche is your soul. So the song is essentially, monomania of the psyche is essentially possession of the soul. But, um, lyrically, did you intend, like what, what, um, what is possessing the soul in this track to you lyrically? It's funny that you ask me specifically about monomania lyrically, because in my opinion, monomania of the psyche is actually the darkest track on death. Absolutely. Wish. I actually have it starred here as one of my favorites. So off yeah. the rip, it's one of my favorites off the album. 
Monomania of the Psyche is the story about a man who gets possessed by a demon and then rapes and kills and then continues to rape his uh, girlfriend who had basically cheated him out the box. So the story kind of goes into the first person view of this dude's head of like, um, well, actually it, it goes through some first person view of the demon at first and how the demon is possessing him. And then uh, it goes into the mind of, of the killer. Uh, I think there's a, there's a line in the song, as you're bound by ropes and chains, I light my goddamn match ablaze. Um, kind of putting, putting yourself or putting the listener or reader in this case in, in the mind. Um, my favorite lyric from the song, um, uh, what was it? Uh, first person view of a murderer. I've cut her neck to the bone. Now that I'm here all alone, I'll stare and watch her choke. So it's essentially trying to make you see what a, a, a serial uh, necrophilic murderer would see and it's yeah i did I, I i really wanted to go into graphic detail with this song um there are tracks that i'm working on for upcoming music that are going to be much much more graphic that i'm actually a little bit afraid to put through this circuit because <laughs> i get banned hey Hey, uh, uh, at the end of the day, it's just a, a, a horror movie and music. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, that's, that's, wow. That's crazy. To, my, okay. My, I did not know that monomania meant possession. Um, yeah. so, so does, does the, is, is this an album where each song has, uh, uh, is it like a concept album? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a concept album, but I could go through and tell you right now that um, Detest is about murder. Monomania <laughs> is about murder. Vortex. V Vortex is... Uh, Vortex is about... Yeah. Vortex is about genocide. Okay. Um, pessimistic is about... But it's not, it's, not, it's not all just one story. Yeah, I mean, they they all kind of just tell a specific story about, you know, hating someone or committing suicide. I think they, they kind of all just tap tap dance around that. Very dark. Very dark. Um and and you correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm under the uh, uh, the impression that all of uh, uh, the artwork, um, all the music, uh, the writing, everything, was this entirely your solo project? And everything you saw and heard was done by me. That's insane. That's insane to me, for the record. That's, holy shit. Um, that's really it wild fucking hard huh? it's so hard dude I mean, like even even like granted yes it's it's easier now than it's ever been but it's still not easy like it's still so far from easy really not it's really not it, uh even even doing you know something as simple as a podcast like it's still uh yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Even though it's easier than it's ever been, it's not. It's still not to the point of anybody could do it. You know what I mean? Um, but then also, I have to ask you about uh, what was it? Um, God damn it! Because uh, you had some other uh, track names that. Well, okay. Well, uh, uh, what what does? Yeah, because because that's that's something that fascinates me about you actually is you you do a really good job at, at, at naming things really wild stuff like track one. How do you even say de, Desejo de Morte? Desejo de Morte. What does that mean? Where'd you get that from? Desejo de Morte. Yeah. Oh, that's Death Wish. Uh, that's, that's oh, that's right. That's right. I shit. I already said that. Yeah, yeah. That's right. 
Um, uh, but also it, uh, like pessimistic vehemence or yes. uh, uh, convening annihilation. Like those are some of my those are some of yeah. my favorite track titles, and I'm Actually, really curious where those come from. You you said something in Dark Reflections that I wanted to uh, touch on. Um, so first, let's just throw out pessimistic vehemence. In my opinion, if you guys are are curious at all, pessimistic vehemence for me that's an artist favorite. I love that song. That song has such a good groove to it. And I actually, I, I can't remember what video it was, but Rob Scallon made a song and the main melody was, oh, and I was like, okay, so how can I implement this? And then I came up with the, and the whole, the whole song, Pessimistic Vehemence, if, if you haven't checked out this album, but you only want to listen to one song, I recommend you listen to that one. Because that that one is my favorite. And it's, yeah. Um, pessimistic vehemence, the word, <laughs> uh, if you think about it, pessimistic, that's the opposite of optimistic. Right. So vehemence meaning you're very sure about something. So oh, okay. All right. Vehemence is saying you're extremely sure some bad shit is about to happen. <laughs> um, and then con conniving. Really? Conniving. Yeah, conniving yeah. annihilation. Uh, conniving annihilation basically means you are, you're basically, to put it in, in, in dumb phrase, conniving annihilation basically means planning murder. Okay. Con Diving, coming up yeah. with. Yep. Yeah. So okay. that's, th those are those two. Um, uh, yeah. uh, wait, 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 you just said, which one, which one did you say is probably your favorite song? Well, I might, I might take that back because to be honest with you, my favorite song on the album has to be um, Probably monomania of the psyche, just because it's the darkest and it it has the best breakdown in my opinion. Oh my god! Oh, I I can't deny that. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Even yeah. even when I, like when I first when I first wrote it, all I would all I would listen to when I would walk to work or whatever is uh, my own track, the de the demo version of my own track because I loved that breakdown so much. That is hard. It is so hard. It is absolutely outstanding. Um. Uh. So the. I mean, the next thing. Okay. So we've got, that's kind of. Uh. Well. Let me just make sure. Uh. What about? Okay. So what about? Uh. 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 uh aversion prevails. Uh. Disdained. Um. Because that was the only. Uh, that was one of the other ones where I was like. I'm not, I'm not, like, okay, I know what aversion prevails and disdain. I know what those words mean, but, like, what is the track about to you personally? Oh. Um. You know, when I, I don't think I had this intention, but when I think about it now, I feel like aversion was written with the intent of telling the story about Living, living with so much hatred that you come to the conclusion of suicide. Okay. But I also think the song touches on wanting to die, but at the same time, not wanting to. Right. You want want to experience death but you also want to experience life or you're just you, you want to escape but you're too afraid to you know go through with it Fair i feel enough. like i feel like that's where a version uh plays around yeah yeah but no i that, that's kind of that's kind of exactly uh, what I got from it, honestly, uh, you know, there were so many, like, you know, I, I said all this in the dark reflections, but like, uh, uh um, uh, 
uh, Monomia, you know, was one of my favorites. It felt very like flesh gotty or fit for an autopsy to me. Um, Vortex was like a fucking Vortex of Oblivion started off with like a choir of demons, you know, like there was just so many different fucking elements happening on this one, but there were different elements taken from different places that work so well together that I'd never, I'd never really heard these different things combined in this way before. So it, it was so cool for me to listen to this album for the first time all the way through where I was like, this is, this is like so many of my favorite things combined into one right off the bat. Like that was my first impression on the first listen through, you know, I've heard it tons of times since, but that was my first on the first <laughs> listen through for sure. Um, now you did just now. Okay. Just uh, once again, reiterating for everyone, this is death wish. It was released on October 31st, Halloween night of 2021, two months ago. I don't have the exact date, but two months ago you released a music video from this album for worthless. Yes, I did. And talk to me about that. Like that, that looked like it was, it, I thought I actually thought it was a really fucking, I love that music video. Uh, I, I really liked it a lot. It felt like it would, could, the rawness of it. It felt like it was only you. Was there anybody else there? No, it was, just it was just you doing it. It was just you doing it. And, and when I watched that, I was like, this is so fucking raw and brutal and just like genuine. Like it just, it, it really, it was like, uh, you know, one of the biggest influences for this podcast is Kevin Smith. So of course clerks. And so when I look at that, I think of like, it's a, it's a very clear, you know, not just cause of the black and white for the record, not just cause of that, but it felt very, just that kind of rawness to me, that same kind of rawness where I was like, this is, this is a great fucking video because of the simplicity. So like, tell me about like your process for thinking of like doing that. Um, well, okay. So the video for worthless, um, that was, <sighs> so I wanted to film a video in the snow. I wanted to film a video, uh, through winter eyes so i waited waited fucking goddamn i waited but i eventually got snow now <laughs> my house uh has a very big area um so it's like i have my backyard and then um, behind the backyard, um, it's this wooded area that goes back really far. And I went back, uh, I went back quite a bit and um, found a good place to set up the, the tripod uh, for my uh, phone and hook up and everything. And uh, then I basically stood in front of the camera, let the song play, and uh, just mimed screaming in the middle of the woods. And uh, it was funny because, uh, you know, before I went out there, obviously I smoked a little weed. And uh, I... Uh, as I'm walking out and trying to find like a, a location to film, I'm like, fuck, it's cold as shit. And it was cold. It was fucking freezing. But then I set up camera and everything, get into position. As soon as I start hearing that fucking piano, I am in fucking character. There, there's not a care in the world about the fucking weather. And I got into it. Like, like I got into it like that. And, um, you know, there's a certain character that I put on um, with 
with music videos and it's essentially just trying to look like trying to look like this monster amongst humans or this 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 abysmal creature amongst the the rest of the human race so that's essentially what i was trying to uh, go for there was there was a moment in that video where 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 the music was playing and there was no vocals and you just like stopped and stared at the camera and didn't blink that was like legitimately chilling like i was like holy shit so i feel like you captured exactly what you were going for so in that part that was right after the lyric all i want is to die so my p- thought process was i'm gonna look these people in the eye after i tell them that all yes. I want. yep so yeah. that's kind of where that came from that's pro- probably, yeah, that vote. Yes, that is, ex- ex- no, yep, that is exactly, yeah. Uh, and I kind of feel like that line um, enhanced that scene a little bit, like just it for the chill factor. Like it, it really like, yeah. all I want is to die. And then you just stare unblinkingly at the camera for like 30 seconds. Like it's it's a long time. It's it's intense. I loved it. I loved it. I think it's a great video. I think it's a great video. Um, because I love again, you know, it's that raw factor. It's that, you know, I man, like as much as much as I like seeing um as much as I love seeing like a oh oh um like a multi-cam, you know, production crew fucking video shot or whatever, as cool as those can be, you know, and I still watch all my favorite metal bands videos, you know, we don't watch them on MTV anymore, VH1, we watch them on YouTube, but I still really appreciate the music video, the art of the music video, but there is something that really speaks to me on a very on a very on a very deep level where it's someone doing it by themselves or even or even just a band like together but they're just there's no production crew there's nobody else involved it's just they're doing it by themselves uh, there, there's something about that to me that's just like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I like that shit more than other stuff. Like I gravitate more towards that than, uh, like full on production crews and stuff. Like there's just something about the rawness of it that I, I gravitate towards. Well, the rawness just comes from, I think, you know, I've only been in this for couple of years but at the same time um and you know i was gonna do multi-shot uh i was gonna do multi-shot on worthless but even I, if you were to it would have just been you right right yeah and i would and that's that's what i'm saying yeah there's another there's now i have a playlist on my youtube channel that has the six music videos following death wish and there's uh, a video on there for Desejo da Morte and Detest Design Destroy back to back. And in oh, the yeah. music, there's a lot. Of, there's, yeah. That video took almost uh, four hours to make. I believe and it. It was fucking horrible. Like two to four, two, not two to four, like one, one to fucking five in the morning in my room making this shit. Oh, I, I, I believe that. Like, I've never, uh, I've never like hardcore edited a video before, but back when this podcast was audio only, uh, I, I would, I would edit it, uh, like kind of way more than I should have, honestly. Uh, Uh, And what I found right away was that one hour of content took anywhere from two to three hours to edit. So for every one hour, it's two to three hours of editing. And that's just audio. 
That's not even video. So yeah, like it, I, it, it, it is editing is a motherfucker. That's for it, sure. It, it is. really is. It really is. But, but I loved your your take. I liked. I actually. I mean, I mean, who knows? Because you didn't make it multi or, or multi shot at least. But I think I think the single cam on you that whole time, you know, there's something, and that's that's something in like in like movies and TV shows even more recently that I've been uh, picking up on in the last few years. Um, like it really kind of again back to an influence of Lost in the Dark. I. Uh, uh, it really came up on when when that Netflix series of Daredevil came out. In like episode two, the episode closes on a very, very long one shot of a fight scene that like maybe like it either never cuts or maybe cuts once. And that's it. And it's just this long shot and in a hallway. And I I saw it and I loved it. I was like, this is a great show. And then by that time, I was already a fan of at the time it was called uh Fat Man on Batman, the Kevin Smith, a Kevin Smith podcast. Yeah. And uh and and they talked about and they picked up on because of course they're filmmakers, they picked up on the fact that it was a one shot, and that was kind of my first introduction to that like long one shot kind of a thing. And ever since then, I have picked up on it and, and everything I've ever watched. And I look for that. And your video felt that way to me. It just kind of the fact that it held on right in that shot the entire time for all like what the three, four minutes. Uh, it just builds intensity. There's something about the one shot that just builds intensity to me. Yeah. Like that, I really appreciate, and, and there's there's like, and I, I, I again, I feel again, I'm using this word. I feel like there's a rawness to it that uh, that I think worked really well in your video, and that you your your, your the movement the bo the body language that you used, the movements that you made were yeah. really fucking well executed. Yeah, the movements are also uh, a big part <clears throat> in the video. Um, because for the first part of the video, I wanted to look angry for when the melodic section came up, I wanted to look sad. So that's why I kind of got up, stood there, acted like I was praying for a second. And yeah, so the, bo the body language was, was everything, uh, with the album or with the album. Well, yeah, <laughs> Bye. Well, was uh, yeah. But which was everything, uh, in the video. And the other reason it wasn't multi-shot was because, again, it was in the fucking cold and I would have had to stop the camera every... No, that's... For five seconds. <laughs> yeah, people don't understand. You got... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to, like, change it every fucking few seconds. Yeah, it's ins that would be insane. And I, But I think that the... the Because... You know what? Because so many, so many things... Uh, so many brilliant moments like that in music videos and in in film or television have come from limitations which is which is crazy to think because you you want to be as expressive as possible but like a limitation of oh i only have one camera or we only have uh, uh this time amount to do this or we, we we should do it in black and white because it's cheaper kind of a thing that shit ends up becoming fucking legendary you know what I mean? Like that, like those limitations end up putting, like some kind of a, 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 I don't know, like a caveat on 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 the piece, whatever it may be, that that may that it's part of its identity. It becomes part of its identity, and that makes it part of its legend. So it work. I think I feel like it works for you. It w works in your advantage. <laughs> uh, but I think it's great. Now you mentioned. Um, a moment ago, uh, or a few months ago, uh, that, that, what, what is this? Uh, is there anything that you can say right now about, um, I'm not going to ask about victims of the system, of course, huge shout out, 
but uh because yes. because I, I i actually just released an uh episode uh by the time this comes out i just released an episode with aaron who gives us a, a, a an update on things um but for your pers- uh, uh um uh, uh your solo stuff do we have uh is there any updates that you can offer is you working on anything new besides victims of the system currently um, I have a lot in the works for Jason Jelzebub. It's 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 a lot more than I should probably be carrying for myself, but I have a lot in the works for Jason Jelzebub. Uh, all I can say is for any like for any like bigger listeners, just just give it time. Just give it time. Cause yep. It 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 is very time consuming, but we'll we'll get there. But I have I have a lot up I have a lot up my sleeve right now, especially for someone that does it all on their own. Uh, where did the for for Death Wish? Now, how did how did you do the album artwork? Um, it was basically so. It was like this digital program. Okay. Okay. So you literally, yeah. Like you didn't go to like Fiverr. You didn't you like outsource at all. It's all Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. See, that's that's the like the thumbnails, the artwork stuff. Like that's all stuff. Like it's done in house. Like I I make Aaron and my other co founder Preston do it all. Like I, I feel like uh i like it all done in house too but it's not none of it's done by me because i do not know how to fucking do that shit like i just it it's beyond me so that's very impressive to me that you you fucking actually like did you use uh like it was was it photoshop no no uh i don't even know how i haven't even been able to pronounce the name of it but it's this digital art station digital art station for the computer Fair enough. I get drew, that. Drew up a little demon. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, I feel like we've done a good job covering Death Wish. I do have a few more. Uh, I do. I, I do have a few more uh, kind of new questions for you. Um, so, so first of all, well, real quick, uh, any like uh, um, uh, uh, any like bit like uh, uh movies or or TV shows that you're like super into that are might that you've seen recently that you really liked or or maybe are because uh, that kind of shit. I mean, movies and TV shows fucking influence me heavily in in any kind of like thing that I would consider art that I do. Um, anything anything getting you lately? The House of Jackville. What is that? I have never heard of this. This is a movie? The okay. House of Jack- a, a movie. Okay. Uh, I, so essentially, it is about uh, Jack, who is a serial killer. And oh, the Ripper? No. Okay. All right. That's maybe where they're getting the influence from. But no, it's about Jack, who has killed a lot of people and uh throughout the movie jack is guided by virgil of dante's inferno off screen through the nine circles of hell and they are discussing five separate murders that he's committed and jack is viewing each murder as an artwork and uh each murder features a woman to die. So it's also extremely misogynistic. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dark uh, imagery in the movie. Uh, it's Definitely, it's definitely not something I'm going to recommend to everybody because it's, it's, I mean, if you're watching the, if you're watching the cut version, good on you. Don't fucking watch the director's cut if you, you know, kind of prone. But yeah, it's basically about a serial killer who uh, 
goes through the nine circles of hell with Virgil and documents all uh, documents five uh, separate murders he committed. And you don't see them going through the nine circles of hell until the fifth murder is told. Okay. And then and then Jack dies somehow. It doesn't show how Jack dies, but he goes in and uh, and the fate is how you'd expect, but yeah. It's 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 a really good movie. It's it's also pretty lengthy. It it touches a lot on like art history in some scenes and, and stuff like that and architecture. Uh, it's yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. What about um any any uh I I'm, I I will have to definitely watch that. Um that's interesting to me. Uh but what about any uh uh, up, upcoming concerts you have uh, you're planning on uh, uh, playing or attending or any upcoming albums that you're interested in that you're uh, excited about unfortunately no concerts um, but uh, let me see. or or anything that's already been released this year that that you that you're really into <laughs> Crown Magnetar's new EP, Alone in Death, is a straight fucking rapist. Cr that's Crown that's Magnetar's? Crown Magnetar. Never heard of them. All right. They are, well, I mean, I think they're, they're technical. They're technical deathcore. Oh, okay. So there's some tech death. All right. And they are very, very aggressive. They right. sound aggressive eat every every song by crown magnetar is gonna make you want to fight a grizzly bear okay i did so, that all right um yeah crown magnetar's new ep um i'm still fucking on enterprise earth the chosen that fucking album is it's a great album fucking insane um I don't know, but I heard they were making a screen six. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's already uh uh I think it already has a release date. Yeah, no, I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Love uh, Scream Five. The fuck out. Leave. There's no way. Oh, come on. Why not? I love Scream Five. I thought they were great. I thought it was great. Obviously, we all love Scream Five, okay? But here's the thing. They're really Really gonna make a sixth one? Jesus, it's only been well, Scream 5 did well and a studio wants money, so of course they're gonna do another one. Well, yeah. That's what it comes down to. Let's be real. Like that's that's all it is. And they have huge stars in it. At the, you know, pe people that when when Scream 1 came out, they weren't huge stars and now they are. You know what I mean? Like fucking have David Arquette back. That's some bullshit. Sorry, spoilers. Oh. For really? I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, you didn't know that? Have you no. seen the fifth? Yeah. Oh, 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 in the fifth. Oh, oh, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. No, I actually I saw the fifth one and then I went back and watched them all. Like when that or, or when that came out. Or no, no, no. I'm sorry. The newest one. Yeah, Scream Six. And I saw that, I went and saw that in theaters with some of my buddies that are huge fans. We did a podcast about it, and then I went back and watched them all. Um, so I'm not, like, I'm not lifelong with this stuff. I'm more recent with it. But, like, I when I went back and watched them all, I was like, these are awesome movies. Like, how did I miss these? Like, there was one where Jane Silent Bob showed up. I was like, fuck yeah! Uh, yeah. Uh. Scream. Yeah, Scream. Uh, if it wasn't for the first Scream, I wouldn't be the horror buff that I am. Well, that's huge. That's huge. Because for me, it was Alien, probably. Alien or, like, Poltergeist. Like, those two, those two were the first two movies to really fucking freak me out. But I liked, but I liked it. 
You know what I mean? Those are the first times where I liked it. Like, yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of a movie that I've seen that's actually made me like freak out, like look behind myself and shit. Well, well, this is kind of a you know a little bit like maybe embarrassing, but uh, for me, um, one movie that absolutely and this is kind of funny to think about now but absolutely terrified me as a child was uh twister like the idea of a fucking tornado like a natural disaster like that made me so scared of thunderstorms for so many years like it it was it was intense i had an intense fear of thunderstorms now i love them now i love it when there's a good thunderstorm like it I love hearing the thunder. Like I love, I love thunderstorms now. But when I was a kid, oh my god, did that shit terrify me? After I saw a Twister, like that, the pol- poltergeist. But specifically, the scene where like the tree comes through the window again during a thunderstorm. Right. Like, so it was kind of that. Now that I think about it, like underlining thing. But but it's 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 weird, isn't it weird that the things that that really hit us and terrified us as children that now we like, oh, I'm into that. Like that's cool. Right. Like, it's it's very odd to me. Uh, like, um, what yeah. go go ahead? I was just gonna say like I'd be walking around the basement with all the lights oh. off. It don't, it don't, it don't matter. Even though I have the tiniest fear in the back of my mind that some fucking poltergeist is gonna. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. There were there were there were times in my life where like every time I would have to go down to the basement and come back upstairs, I would at- walk extra fast upstairs just because I felt like something was behind me or something. Like, yeah. There was a point, there was a point in time where I would run to my bed or I would like run and jump onto my bed so nothing could grab my foot. <laughs> yeah yes exactly <laughs> exactly um okay so just just you know what we've been we've been going for a minute now just, just a few, few more quick questions for you um uh what uh what's your favorite song you've ever written man my favorite song that i've ever written yeah like what 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 one of your songs where you're like oh uh, that that's a fucking good one. <laughs> like, I don't know, bro. I've written so many. Or, uh, or, or least favorite. You could, you could say that too. Uh, w- one of my least favorite songs that I've ever made is a song off of my EP titled Evangeline. You can find it anywhere. Yep. Uh, it's the last song on on the EP called Side C I D E. I don't like it because it was literally three layers of me freestyling on piano. It's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Okay. I don't. I personally don't like how the song sounds too because Evangeline was a very rushed performance except for like two songs that were made like months before the idea even came up um now if we're if we're actually gonna talk favorite track released yes probably uh I'm going to go with, oh, fuck, and this is hard, too. (laughs) I mean, I got to fucking give it to... uh, Well... 
No. My favorite song that I've released is the first track on Death Wish, Tazajo Oh. Downward. Really? Is, Are there... That is my favorite. That is it, is it then <laughs> wait. God damn it. I might be thinking of wait, is that an instrumental track? No, 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 no. No, that, no, no. Okay, yeah. All right. I'm thinking of something else. All right, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, Desejo. I mean, I like Desejo Del Morte because in my opinion, it's not only one of the darkest, most hellish sounding songs I've ever made, but I also I, I play I play cello in the intro. I came up with the little acoustic section in the middle of the song, like freestyling, basically. The melody is extremely dissonant. Um, and the lyrics, the, the lyrics, Desejo da Morte is the only song on the album that doesn't talk about murder or suicide. The lyrics are literally a metal way of saying get your ass fucking ready for what you're about to hear um the what the main lyric that i can tell you that that like sets that is um before this hymn before this hymnal begins let me make this only sin i have nothing left to left to give except what you're about to witness so it's essentially saying, like, listen to this with caution. I mean, literally, in it when so, like, when I back when I did the dark reflections, um, obviously, I take notes. What I wrote about that track, it's so funny that you just said that. What the, the two lines that I wrote about the intro, Desejo de Morte starts with a descent into hell style scan soundscape. Yeah. That's literally what I wrote without ever talking to you about it for the record, huge and symphonic blackened intro track. Like that's, that's what I wrote about that song. Like literally like, like freestyle, like just sitting there listening to it, not even looking and just freestyle writing. Like, that is immediately what I picked up on it. Like, so it's so awesome that you said like the, the blackened element, like, uh, right. yeah, no, I agree. I, and that's, that's wow. Okay. That's, um, I mean, it just sets an, an, an incredible tone for the entire rest of the album. And it, it yeah, I, I love, <laughs> I love that intro track, dude. I really do. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, um, what now, about what go ahead? I, I was gonna say, I have one favorite track that is unreleased that the public has yet to hear. It is a track off of what I'm hoping to be the follow up to Death Wish. Uh, there's a track on this album called Perpetual Gloom. And well, there's two tracks on this album. There's Perpetual Gloom and Light Extermination. All right. And both of those tracks I am just so fond of. I think they are two of the most heavy, chaotic, and dark tracks I've ever made. Fuck yeah. Oh, I love it. Like, especially Light, Light Extermination is a song that'll make you, like... If you listen to it with really good speakers, light extermination will probably give you a heart attack at the right decibel. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, there's a little teaser, everyone, for the, what's coming up next. Um, uh, are you now, okay, kind of got two closers for you that aren't, aren't my normal ones because I've already asked you my normal one way too many times. <laughs> um, what um do you, are you like uh are you a uh uh I don't know how to say this like are you like a merch collector at all like do you collect like like band merch at all or anything like that I mean I don't collect but I buy merch from bands that I enjoy all right fair enough fair enough then then I'll skip that one um now I know but clearly 
clearly considering the fact that you play every fucking instrument on this album, you're clearly a, a bit of a gearhead. What would your holy grail piece of gear be? Whether it be a guitar, a piano, a fucking uh, an amp, a fucking pedal, whatever. What would your holy grail piece of gear be? Microphone, I don't care. Like the one? Like, wait, wait hold on. What do you mean holy grail? Well, like for, for you, for you, like for, okay. So for me as a, uh, like, uh, like all the only instruments I play are the microphone when I'm doing the podcast or a guitar when I'm playing by my, I'm not in a band. I, I just play for myself. Um, so a Holy Grail piece of gear for me would be like a certain guitar for me. That w- that's what it would be for me. Um, what, what would it be for you as someone uh, who who plays many more instruments and and like what's what's that one thing that you don't have that you've always wanted maybe or yeah that that one thing you've always wanted a, a guitar or uh, an amp a pedal whatever anything like that one thing you don't have that that you're like god damn it I've always wanted that an electric drum set so I can fucking play at night beautiful. That's a, that's a, that's a perfect answer, and 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 what blows what blows my mind about elect, like I just learned this less than two weeks ago that electric jump sets now their their fucking main like uh, uh bass drum at the bottom they the, the electric like before their everything was just a pad right now they actually make it look like a, a real drum kit but it's electric. And it looks yeah. like a real fucking bass drum and shit. So what would which what is there a specific one you have your eye on or anything? Or I, I, I dude, those things are so expensive. I would not have the money for that. But but dream. I mean, if if I had no, because I mean, I don't. I really have a specific brand either. Fair enough. So it's Fair enough. yeah. So an electric, a, a, a real good electric drum kit. So you can play at night so nobody else can really hear you. They just hear the, you know what I mean? And that's not very loud at all. So well, I get that. I will say, uh, if it's been of interest, um, the instrument I'd probably grab if the house was on fire would probably be my eight string guitar i was gonna that would be the follow-up question is your favorite current piece yeah this one <sighs> this is this is the guitar that i've been writing uh the whole new album on and then um i'm taking a turn back to my other guitar and this guitar for the album after that what makes you gravitate towards the eight string <laughs> Uh, it's just extremely low and aggressive sound. And that's it. Is that an Ibanez? Um, no, it's uh, ESP. ESP. Oh, oh man, that's my own heart. All right, beautiful. Uh, you want to hear me plug in and jam it? Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Are you kidding me? Cause I you you already know I'm a huge ESP LTD guy, huge huge huge. Don't you have a couple? What? Don't you have a couple? I have a couple. Yeah, I have a couple. I have a LTD EC1000, and I have two um, uh, ESP LTD Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> See if we're in two. Ooh.
damn, what was that? Huh? What was that? Nothing. No, dude. I, oh my god. All right, give us get then. Give us a fucking trailer. Give us a fucking uh, your favorite riff riff to play uh, from Death Wish. From from Death Wish, you yeah. know what? I'll give you. I'll give you a riff from the new album. <gasps> oh fuck yeah, that's even better. All right, does it have a name yet? Does it have a name? If not, it's fine. Of course. The one I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you perpetual gloom. Oh shit! All right. <laughs> It's gonna be some shit. I I I I I cannot think honestly. Uh, does that have any kind of? Uh, uh, do you have any idea of a, of a release date for that? Like roughly, like this summer, kind of a thing. Well, I was gonna try and make it four twenty. <laughs> I love it. That's not happening, unfortunately. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, it's just, it's a lot in the making right now. I only have like three songs mixed. So, so before the end of the summer, we could say, um, potentially, potentially, potentially before the end of the summer. Excellent. I love it. I love it. That I can't think of a better place to end. And I do want to say, uh, uh, before we close out this episode, I'm so happy we ended on, on, on a guitar thing right there because, um, I don't know if you know this, and 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 just for everybody watching this, this obviously comes out as always, like a, a week or so later. Um, this would be out early. What is it? It's Friday right now. It'll be it'll be it, it's April eighth right now. So this episode will be out like very early the week after next. And um, tonight, tonight, April eighth, um. Uh, we have to cheers to two lost heroes. Um, uh, tonight would be uh, uh, we two birthdays. Uh, Paul Gray of Slipknot and Alexi Laiho would have been 42 years old. Uh, Paul Gray was a little bit older, about like 
six or seven years older, I think. But Alexi would have been 42 years old tonight. So I'm so happy to close on a guitar um, in honor uh, that, uh, yeah, those those two musicians were huge for me, huge for me personally. Uh, especially Alexi. Of course, he's, he's right up here in the studio at all times. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to give a quick shout out to them. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think I, 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 I'm out of questions. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out of questions for you. I think we've been going long enough. I cannot thank you enough for giving us a little preview right there, uh, uh for the upcoming stuff. Of course, uh, uh, victims of the system will be up here in Michigan in August. And, uh, we got plenty, uh, to talk about then hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, you guys will actually be live in studio for the first time, which would be fucking insane for me. And I cannot wait for that. Um, we got a lot coming. Uh, so thank you so much, Jason. We're going to wrap this one up. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight and, 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 uh, taking us on a deep dive of death wish. Great album. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, be sure to check out Victims of the System. If it weren't for them, wouldn't... I, I, I definitely... If it wasn't for Victims of the System, I, I definitely would not be, you know, where I am at right now. So check out Victims of the System. Check out uh, all our releases from... From, from back from back to front, start to finish. Um, <clears throat> brutal Slamming Death Metal. Uh, check out Jason Jailsabub if you want to listen to the, the, the sound of millions dying. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. That's a good way to describe it. And, <laughs> and of course... Uh, I mean, or the sound of your grandma's cat you know, checking on a hairball. <laughs> dude, dude, back when I started a band called Vaccination on MySpace, when, yeah, to date myself, um, the description of the sound was a bag of cats being beaten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, check out Jason Gels above if you want to hear a bag of cats being beaten. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, man. And of course, um, yes, of course, like all things, uh, uh, all, every, everything we just mentioned will be linked in the description below to all things Jason Jazzabub and Victims of the System, as always. So you can find them right here in the links below if you want to hear the album Death Wish and, uh, and, and follow him. Follow Jason for all things uh, uh, upcoming because there is a lot a lot upcoming. This Russell. motherfucker is a is a you you are a ruthless motherfucker. You 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 uh yeah you never stop and uh, it's it's always very exciting to get to talk to you. I always like to get to talk to you, buddy. So thank you so much for your time tonight. I'm so happy this this episode has been like three months in the making now, <laughs> and I'm. It and I'm I'm so happy we finally got to do it. Uh, it, it it's always a genuine pleasure getting to talk to you, man. Uh, whether it's victims of the system or solo, like I, I I you know I cannot fucking wait to meet you guys in person. Um, it's really going to be special. So uh, after after how much we've talked, so thank you yeah. so much, and uh, and uh, you know as always, you're welcome back on the show anytime you ever want to be. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. And uh, we'll we'll close. I'll, I'll 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 stop recording this one and we'll wrap up and and we'll be good to go. But but thank oh, you. and uh, what are you fucking doing? Subscribe to Lost in the Dark podcast. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, and subscribe. And yeah, again, why are you uh, watching? Why are you watching if you're not subscribed, doofus? It's a good point. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> But uh, all things uh, linked to Jason in the description below. Thank you so much, Jason, for your time tonight. And uh, we'll be back. Love y'all, Crip Crew. Thank you, Jason. Good night. Absolutely always have a great time talking to him. Um, 
yeah, he, he he's always a lot of fun for me to talk to. Uh, uh, I feel, I don't know, like I feel a, a, a kinship with him for some reason. Like with everything that he does, he's he was the uh, he does the instruments, the writing, the artwork, everything, the visuals. He's also his family. I know is into ghost hunting and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoy every chance I get to talk to Jason. I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as we did doing it. Um, yeah, uh, that's gonna do it for this episode of Lost in the Dark podcast. We hope you all enjoyed. As always, we got a ton more coming up very very soon. But until next time, raise your fucking horns and bang your goddamn heads. We love you all to death. Good night. Lost in the dark.